Hi, everybody. <clears throat> Professor Wayne here. How you doing? Thanks for coming. I uh, wanted to show you something a little bit different today. Uh, these are beach hunt tips. And if there's interest, we'll do a follow up with a field and woods and uh, other types of seeded hunts. But this was a seeded hunt that we had uh, locally. And I wanted to just share with you um, a few tips here from this. And uh, I'm going to be maneuvering the screen and trying to record it for you. Uh, the first tip, first mistake, all right, if I'm going to say anything about mistakes, are these two people. This guy is standing here just watching. He's missing all the fun. He should have a detector and he's swinging. He's just watching us. And this lady's saying, I don't need a detector. I can just walk along here and find it. And uh, actually, the other day we had a hunt. And we had people walk through our hunt field and things are just under the surface. A few of them were picking up stuff. So we ended up having to yell at them, stop picking up our stuff. We, this is for the hunt. This isn't for your uh, enjoyment. This is for our hunt. And they, they kept walking and they, uh, they never put it back. So we just did our thing and uh, did our hunt. But um, seriously, uh, just to point out, the hunt markers here are the orange markers. And they were set up here right in the line. And then they extended all the way to the end of the beach down where you see some guys detecting over here. Uh, someone pointed out there's some sticks here. Uh, these sticks are unrelated to us. These aren't our sticks. So I had said to them at the beginning of the hunt, I was the hunt master for this one, that we had sticks here and we went straight down to the end. So one of the things you'll notice is this gentleman right here is outside of the area. Now, he may not have believed it, but um, that's not where we put anything. And the reason that we did that was we didn't want to put um, anything near the dunes. We didn't want people going into the dunes so we wouldn't get in any trouble. So he was kind of wandered off. And that's happened before. I've had people actually in the same hunt, they went to our end and he kept walking. And it was kind of funny because he kept walking and there was nothing there. So I felt bad for him. I walked down and I said, you know, yeah, by the way, the, the, the line ends back there, like 20 yards behind you. It's, uh, there's nothing over here, unless it's a natural find, and maybe you'll get something, but not, not, not from the uh, seeded hunt anyway. So just a few other pointers, just a, a little things um, that you may or may not pick up from just looking at this. You know, this is part of the crew that was there, and I, I, I actually didn't want people to recognize the people, and you may, but there's no names here. It's just more just to show what's going on. You know, certain things that strike me right away, like when I see this person on the ground and they're using a pin pointer or they're, they're spending time on the ground for a seated hunt, when you're when everything is really about speed, you know, quite honestly, most things get found within the first half hour, 40 minutes. Uh, once you hit that go signal, I mean, it just disappears. So if you are wasting time, I guess is what I'm probably trying to point out here, and you're on the ground. Uh, trying to find something, you're probably just eliminating more targets that you could get. So, you know, my thing is, you know, everything that I hid normally, all right, normally that I hid would be just under the surface, would probably maybe an inch, two inches. So you should be able to pick it up in scanning pretty quickly. Now, there was a, there was something a little different here. Uh, on this hunt, I had a really good gold necklace and I put it about eight inches down, all curled up. And I put a couple of nails on top of it because you had to work for it. And if you were going to get that, you'd have to work. And yeah, maybe you'd have to go down on your, your knees and you'd have to dig up those nails and, and you know register those targets. But that was kind of the exception, not the rule. Most of the targets here were just tokens and the tokens were to be turned in for silver dimes later. But when you go, you go around, so this one here, I would, I would recommend not going down to the ground and, and just wasting that time initially. Maybe once the hunt is over, and you want to go and you want to like grid this field and you want to try to pick up any anything that's left, then you might get a little fussier with doing stuff like that. Or like if you're looking for natural finds too, maybe there is something there, you know, maybe you'll luck out. I don't know. Uh, the other is this uh, gentleman right here. Well, his coil is off the ground, but that's from It looks like he's looking into his, his container. Now, one of the things that people do is they, um, the people that do this, and a lot of them don't want me telling you this, but when you do it and you're, you're kind of like the master of this craft, what happens is, like I said, speed is, is, is going. These people will just scoop and then just signal. Is there no signal? They know what's in their scoop. They keep going. And then when they'll lose, they'll shake out their scoop. They'll just dump their scoop into their pouch and then just keep rolling. And then um, won't waste any time looking inside the scoop. You'll figure that out afterwards. As long as the target signal's not there, you just keep moving. Uh, so to stop, and that's the, my whole idea is just to stop. That's not going 
going to be a, a good use of your time, especially when the targets are going to go really, really quick. Uh, these gentlemen pretty much, uh, you know, following the line. A really good example here is the, uh, the coils right on that stand. Now, granted, nothing here was really deep, so um, you should be able to pick it up. But as you raise your coil, like over in this case, this gentleman's got the coil up about four or five inches off the ground, you're losing some depth. So, you know, again, not a huge deal here, but if it was a deeper targets, then that would be losing depth that could be useful for him later on. Uh, this person's right here is right on the line, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. This person's fine digging. Everything over here is fine digging. Um, one thing is, is that different detectors, and, and it really for the detectors, I'm not talking like which detector to use for a sand hunt or a seeded hunt. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. You don't need much of a detector. You just need something that's going to pick up a signal. And if you know the tokens, then you can target for those tokens. If you know there's coins, then you go for coins. If you know there's tokens, then I usually let everyone look at the tokens first if I'm using something special so they can see what the token reads. And then if they want to go for that signal, they know that VDI number, then they can go for that and then just focus on that. That's fine. Um, like I said, I'm not going to talk about one machine over another. It really doesn't matter. Um, if you get something that picks up signals just under the surface, you should be fine. But what does matter is sometimes machines don't like each other. And you'll be standing next to somebody and you'll find out that you're getting like a lot of interference, like a different frequency. So you may have to find that you, you have to move away from other people. So there's enough depth uh, uh, distance here between the people here. So that shouldn't be so much of an issue um, that that's not what's happening. And this is a pretty big, I like a pretty big field area so people can spread out. So, you know, that's the whole idea. Now, initially people just kind of like wander really fast. Um, at the end of the hunt, then I would recommend maybe going back and gridding it if you want to clean up the last few things that are there. But initially, it's really, like I said, it's just you cover as much ground as you can. Targets should be evenly distributed. That's the whole idea with this is we try to evenly distribute the targets. So it's all, all heavy on one side than the other. They really should be all over the place. Um, we did have an old rule that everyone would start at the same point and then work their way across. I've had people challenge that. Some people want to start at the other end. I mean, I'm not going to fight people over it. You know, if, if, if wherever you want to start is fine with me, I guess if that's going to be a, a, a moot point uh, in terms of finding stuff, it's all over the place there. So it really, really doesn't matter. Uh, you'll find stuff. So anyway, I hope this is just a quick video just to help you out a little bit, maybe some tips. Uh, again, it's about speed, go, you know, and uh, I know some people like when they pick up their scoop, they fill it with whatever is there. They don't even shake it. I mean, you want to get the sand out, but they won't shake all the other garbage out and they just dump it in their own, in their, in their bag. The, the thing I do recommend a couple of other tips though. These are definitely tips to remember. Make sure your batteries are charged. I can't tell you like how many times people have come into the hunt and then something fails. And you really don't need a pinpointer for this type of a hunt. It's just your detector and it would be enough. A pinpointer is an overkill for this, but make sure you have fresh batteries in it. It's, it's the worst thing to have your pinpointer not work because the battery's you know old or dead. Uh, I've seen people try to uh, remember to charge a detector, but you should test it before you come to make sure it really did get charged. I had someone that uh, thought they charged it and we got there the next morning. It really wasn't charged. That's not so cool. Um, Headphones are required, so everyone's supposed to wear headphones. Uh, rarely a headphone will go bad. Uh, the wireless sometimes uh, could be issues, but you know, that's usually not a problem. Know your rules, that's important, like the rules for the hunt. Um, I've had some issues in the past, and I'm, I'm not really picky on rules, but as long as everyone follows like the basic rules anyway. So coil size is one. Uh, know what the maximum coil size is. Some people take offense when you use a giant coil and you're covering a lot of ground. So sometimes they'll make uh, like a standard coil size would be the maximum you can use. Uh, if you do smaller, that's on you. But um, usually people try to get a, away with as big a coil as they can because you just cover more ground. So that's one thing. Uh, scoops, I've had so many arguments about scoops. And, you know, I don't want to go there, but it, it's whatever the rules say. Uh, some people like the hand scoop. Some people like the medium handle scoop. Some people like the long handle scoops. Uh, there's advantages to all of them. Um, I, I, I don't see a, you know, a real harm in someone that can't bend over and needs a, a long handle scoop because their back can't take it. They can't bend down. Uh, I think that's an exceptional case. Uh, I don't see them as weapons out there where you have to worry about it. But uh, some people took offense when people use long scoops. Uh, I think long scoops are kind of cool when you do regular beach hunting. 
because regular beach hunting, you can use the end of the scoop. I have one friend that drags his end behind him so he can kind of like a, leave a pattern of where he's covered. So he kind of knows where he's been. So it's like kind of like a gridding type of a thing. And that's pretty cool. Uh, you can't do that with other stuff. Uh, and the last tip I would share with you, because this happened, um, is somebody came to me and they said, wait, my detector's not working right. It's really not working right. I'm getting all these false signals. And, and I looked at it and he's wearing his boots. And I said, are your boots like steel toe shoes? And he looked at me and he said, yeah, I have my steel boots on today. So I, he said, that's screwing my detector up. And yeah, probably will. So what you, I just told him is a sand, you know, it's pretty not cold out, take your shoes off, just do barefoot and you'll be fine. So he got out there right away and he, he was, he did okay at the end, but uh, he was kind of embarrassed about being the only barefoot person out there. But um, anyway, for what it's worth, I hope you get something out of it. It's beach hunting is fun. It's a lot of fun. You know, like I like to do different kinds of stuff. This is like a traditional one. Uh, we do pirate ones and we do all kinds of different stuff. And uh, it just depends on the hunt master, what they want to put out there, what your club agrees to do, uh, but just have fun. That's the most important thing. It's not really serious. It's, it's just having some fun. All right. So take care. We'll see you around out there. And if there's some interest, uh, let me know. I'll, I'll do one on the woods. Cause that's like another story. Like when you do a field, a uh, seeded field, uh -huh. that's a lot of, a little bit different. So I'll talk about that if you're interested. Okay. So have a great day and uh, I'll see you guys soon. All right. Take care. Bye.